Hello, everyone. My name is Terry McVenus. I'm the honored to serve as the president and chief executive officer of RTCA. RTCA is an aviation-centered standards development organization whose mission is to inspire the creation and the implementation of integrated performance standards that meet the changing global aviation environment and further ensure the safety, security, and overall health of the aviation ecosystem. Today, I'm pleased to have with us one of our newest members to join the RTCA family, Ms. Pamela Cohn, the Global Chief Operating Officer and U.S. General Manager at the Urban Air Mobility Division of Hyundai Motor Group. Thank you, Pamela, and welcome to RTCA. Um, Thank you, Gary. Happy to be here. Tell us uh, a little bit about the UAM division of the uh, Hyundai Motor Group and, and how it all began. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the UAM division at Hyundai Motor Group is our new innovative division at, at Hyundai, and it's focused on the future of flight and the future of air mobility. And the way that we see our division is we have almost two joint missions. One is to create safe, reliable, affordable, quiet, passenger-centered vehicles that can be part of your daily commute or be part of a public safety implementation um, and really just be part of the mobility ecosystem in any city around the world. And we couple that with the second part of our mission, which is to actually open the market for UAM operations and for advanced air mobility operations by working with different stakeholders around the world from infrastructure to regulators to state and local governments to make sure that we are creating the best products and that also those markets are ready for those products to actually come and be implemented. Um, so that's a little bit about what we do and how we see what we're trying to do in the market today. And uh, how we came to be was actually part of a, a broader transformation at Hyundai Motor Group. So for those of you that know a little bit about Hyundai, we've always been a really customer centric organization and always trying to understand, you know, what are our customers needs and anticipate what they're going to need 5, 10, 15 years in the future. And one of the things that we realized about five years ago was that the world is changing and a lot of the key issues in urban areas in particular are only getting worse with time. And the future of that isn't necessarily to just be a car company, but it's to actually provide mobility solutions. And those mobility solutions need to be sustainable and electric. They need to be autonomous and leverage ride sharing and other forms of demographic shifts. And most importantly, they need to not only just use the ground, but they also need to use the air. So that was kind of a big shift that we did at Hyundai about five years ago. And as a result, you see a lot of big bets coming from us, one of which, of course, is the UAM division focusing on that air domain. But a lot of the other ones are about creating that integrated mobility ecosystem from our work in robotics with Boston Dynamics to our JV with Aptiv called Motional. So it's part of that broader transition of us becoming a mobility solutions provider and trying to provide a more integrated, seamless experience of mobility for people in the future. Great. You know, it seems like every every day I open up LinkedIn and and uh, there's always something in there with with uh, some advanced air mobility uh, company that has uh, some amazing designs, potential opportunities there. But but on on a grand scale, um, what are your perspectives overall of the uh, advanced air mobility industry today? I think that's a great question. And I think for us, what we're really excited about with the advanced air mobility market is we see this as part of the broader shift in terms of mobility. It's one of the first times that aviation can truly have the opportunity to be democratized and to be part of the everyday experience of people around the world. So when we think about our perspective on the AAM market, we think about it as one very important piece of that broader mobility transition. And that in the future, what we hope to do is that urban air mobility and advanced air mobility offerings will be part of a seamless and integrated service. And that from the customer's perspective, you don't have to think, oh, I wanna take a UAM vehicle to work today, let me book that, but rather I need to go to work today. And so let me book the best, most efficient route. And that route may be a UAM vehicle. It may be a ground vehicle to a UAM vehicle, or maybe a scooter or other form of micromobility to a car to your UAM vehicle but all of it is seamless from the customer perspective, and we get to play a very important part in busting congestion and providing a sustainable method of mobility that helps take you from point A to point B. Um, besides the moving of, of uh, say, people, are there, are there any other practical applications for AAM? I know we've talked to some, some folks in the healthcare industry, for example, transporting that sort of thing. Do you, do you see any other sort of things on the horizon for AAM? AAM? Oh, absolutely. Um, at Hyundai, we define AAM pretty broadly. Um, so obviously, urban air mobility was traditionally the word that we used for passenger carrying missions that could help you with your commute or going to the grocery store. But AAM itself is actually the confluence of obviously electrification and autonomy. 
And those coming together in the aviation sphere, as you said, have many applications from passenger carrying ones to cargo carrying ones and logistics that could also be very helpful to public service implement implementation, such as medevac services um, and other forms of EMS services. So absolutely, we see a lot of different applications. And in particular, we think that some of those public good applications could be early use cases that we can use to not only demonstrate the safety and reliability of this technology, but also do some really good work inside of communities that need it the most. Um, what, what do you see as maybe some of the biggest challenges that are faced in the AAM industry today? Oh, there's a lot of challenges that definitely keep me up at night when I think through everything sure. that needs to come together. <laughs> it's actually one of the reasons why we created a dual mission for our division. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that are big challenges on the vehicle themselves when it comes to specifically technological advancement. So a lot of key technologies with electrification and propulsion, battery technologies, autonomy sensors and reliability. All of those, of course, that big box of technology that's a really big challenge, making sure not only they get to the level of performance that we want, but that we're able to demonstrate the safety and reliability of them to the regulators. I think the second really big challenge is affordability. From our perspective, advanced air mobility isn't going to have reached its potential until it reaches a broad and diverse community around the world. And that means we need to get it to a price point where everyday people can consider it part of their everyday journey. And so bringing down costs, not only on key technologies, but also on manufacturing is gonna be critical to making sure that this is actually a workable solution that many people can access. Um, outside of the vehicle though, when we think through kind of that ecosystem component, public acceptance is very important, creating clear um, regulation is important, and obviously creating the infrastructure to support the system, both the physical infrastructure and the digital infrastructure is gonna be critical. So if I were to bucket them, those would be the big five the technology and affordability for the vehicle themselves and public acceptance, regulation and infrastructure off the vehicle as well. Great. Um, so what, why, why did the uh, UAM division of Hyundai join RTCA? So one of the things you're gonna hear us say a lot over the next couple of years is it's gonna take a village to make UAM happen. And what that village is gonna have to be comprised of is a very broad and diverse group of stakeholders that we all need to come together and stack hands on common standards that allow us to have safe and reliable operations and interoperable systems that we can all leverage in order to provide AAM services to the public. And RTCA pl plays such a critical role in standard setting and in bringing that industry together to make sure that we can all work in the same direction to create a safe and reliable system for everyone. So we're really excited to be part of RTCA and be part of that journey and to um, count ourselves part of your village as we make UAM and AAM happen for the world. Pamela, thank you for your time and, and thank you for joining RTCA. We, we look forward to a long and productive partnership uh, with you and, and with your organization. And for our audience, if, if you're interested in learning more about RTCA, our, our standards development work, or have any questions about the training we provide, or are interested in becoming part of the RTCA family of members so that you too can have a voice in developing standards, you can contact us directly through our website at www.rtca.org. Thank you for listening.